Seed oils are everywhere. From your salad dressing to your bag of chips, these oils have quietly become one of the most consumed ingredients in the modern diet. But what are they really? Where did they come from? And why are so many people debating whether they're harmless or harmful? In this video, we're diving deep into the history, science, and controversy of seed oils. By the end, you'll know exactly what they are, how they're made, what the studies say, and why they've become a major topic in health circles. Let's unpack everything you need to know about seed oils. What are seed oils? Seed oils are vegetable oils that come from the seeds of plants, unlike oils from fruits like olives or coconuts. Some of the most common seed oils include soybean oil, corn oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, cotton seed oil, grape seed oil. These oils are prized in industrial food production for being cheap, shelf-stable, and flavor-neutral. They're found in countless packaged foods, fast food items, baked goods, salad dressings, and even some health snacks. How are seed oils made? Unlike olive oil, which is typically cold-pressed, most seed oils require intensive processing to extract. Here's a simplified version of the process. Seeds are cleaned and crushed. They undergo high heat treatment to separate oil from solids. Chemical solvents like hexane are used to increase yield. The oil is refined, bleached, and deodorized to remove odors and colors. What results is a clear, odorless oil that is shelf-stable and ideal for mass production, but it's been through a lot to get there. A short history of seed oils. Seed oils weren't always in our diets. Their story begins in the early 20th century with industrial waste. Cottonseed oil, originally a byproduct of cotton processing, was one of the first seed oils to be repurposed as a cooking ingredient. In 1911, Procter & Gamble introduced Crisco, a hydrogenated cottonseed oil marketed as a cleaner alternative to lard. From there, seed oils exploded in popularity. The Great Depression and World War II made these cheap oils even more appealing. By the 1950s and 60s, Seed oils were widely used in processed foods. Then came the low-fat craze of the 1980s and 90s, which pushed people away from animal fats and toward vegetable oils. Today, seed oils are a global industry worth billions. What's the nutritional profile? Seed oils are extremely high in polyunsaturated fats, especially omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6s are essential in small amounts, but modern diets often contain far more than our bodies need. The typical Western diet now has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 20.1 or even higher. Some researchers believe this imbalance contributes to inflammation, which is linked to conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and autoimmune disorders. Additionally, seed oils are sensitive to heat and light. They can oxidize, especially when used for high heat cooking, leading to the formation of toxic compounds such as aldehydes. The debate healthy or harmful so, are seed oils bad for you? It depends on who you ask. Mainstream nutrition guidelines still classify seed oils as heart-healthy due to their unsaturated fat content. Studies have shown that replacing saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats can lower LDL cholesterol. However, critics argue that the high processing introduces potential toxins. The omega-6 overload may cause chronic inflammation. Many studies are funded by the food industry and may downplay risks. The long-term effects of consuming oxidized oils are still unclear. Some experts recommend reducing intake of processed seed oils and opting for natural fats like olive oil, avocado oil, and butter in moderation. Where are seed oils hiding? Even if you try to avoid them, seed oils are everywhere. They're found in fried foods, snack chips, cereal, cookies and pastries, coffee creamers, sauces and condiments, fast food, restaurant cooking oils, frozen meals, non-dairy substitutes. Sometimes they appear under different names, like vegetable oil or just canola. Always check the label. Are cold-pressed or organic versions better? Some seed oils are marketed as cold-pressed, expeller-pressed, or organic. These versions may be less processed and free from chemical solvents, but they still contain high levels of omega-6 fats and can still oxidize with heat. While they might be slightly better, they're not miracle foods. Moderation is still key. What about cooking with seed oils? Because of their high smoke points, seed oils are often used in frying. 
but high heat can cause oxidation, especially with repeated use like in fast food fryers. When cooking at home, it's safer to use saturated or monounsaturated fats for heat-based cooking. Examples include coconut oil, avocado oil, G olive oil for medium heat, save seed oils, if any, for cold dishes, or better yet, minimize them entirely. Are there any benefits? Yes, in context. Seed oils are affordable and accessible, can lower LDL when replacing saturated fats, are shelf-stable and versatile, are cholesterol-free, contain vitamin E, but any benefit must be weighed against quality, processing, and quantity consumed. How to reduce seed oil. Intake. Here are practical steps. Cook at home more often. Use whole, unprocessed foods. Read labels carefully. Avoid ultra-processed snacks and meals. Choose oils like extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, or grass-fed butter. When eating out, ask what oils are used, or choose grilled or steamed options. Final thoughts. Seed oils are neither a magical superfood nor pure poison. They're a byproduct of modern industrial food systems and their health effects depend on how much you consume, how they're processed, and what you replace them with. Understanding their history, how they're made, and what the science says can help you make better choices for your health. Like many things in nutrition, context and balance matter. Now that you know the full story of seed oils, what food ingredient, trend, or health myth should we explore next? Let us know in the comments.